Is it their eyes? Their fur? Or simply, their moves? No matter what it is, face it, they're irresistible. It's time to catch up with some of the freshest faces that we share our world with. From sunrise to sunset, be immersed in their lives. Mingle with these youngsters and get to know them and their families better. Experience all the hustle and bustle of their daily routines, all while getting up close to these baby animals in our world. Our day is being spent in the busy barnyards and lush meadows of farms all around the world. Coming up, these spring babies have really got the place jumping. Showing off their passion for extreme sports, like log climbing and bucket sitting. Plus, this bundle of energy is hot to trot, ready to show off its horsepower. And get set to be introduced to the fine art of snout jousting. This is once a champion. Farms. Apart from wide open spaces and fresh air, one of the biggest appeals of country life are the classic animals that populate the fields and barnyards of farms. Even more of a draw card are their babies. They are the star attractions. And just as household pets bring fond smiles and laughter, so too do the sight and sounds of these delightful youngsters. Spend some good quality time with them and it doesn't take long to discover there's a lot going on upstairs. Cows, for example, have excellent memories, able to recognise faces and places. Pigs are very intelligent, thought to be the smartest domestic animal ahead of dogs and cats. As for chickens, they are far from bird-brained, able to learn how to do puzzles and play games. But wait, there's plenty more. Thanks to smaller hobby farms, there's an even greater range of animals, often unusual and exotic, to capture our hearts and imaginations. Time to showcase the ever-charming occupants of the farms in our world. wake-up call for all farm residents. Lambs don't need much encouragement to spring into action, but a milky treat does sweeten the deal. The rest of the flock are getting into their greens. A sprinkling of morning dew must make them that little bit tastier. are still a little sleepy and happy to watch the experts in action. In another paddock, a foal's basically having breakfast in bed, giving its long legs a few more minutes rest.
Inside a barn, a little farm cat is warming up, giving its much smaller legs a good stretch. No sleeping in for this litter of hungry piglets. They're already out and about in the early mist, following their mother and their snouts in search of tasty morsels. The goslings are doing the same. The whole gaggle enjoying a peaceful morning waddle. The pace is starting to pick up out in the paddocks. The table is set with plenty of hay bales on offer. Breakfast is so good around these parts that it stops traffic. It's a bit like the running of the bulls in Spain. Just woollier. There's always one straggler. Here's one mother you wouldn't want to mess with. She's an Ancoli Longhorn, an African cattle breed. Eventually, this hungry calf will develop its own set of formidable horns. From tip to tip, they can grow to be more than two meters wide. In the meantime, this big baby is happy to gently headbutt her udder so it can have its first nurse for the day. This mum really knows how to spoil her calf. Her milk having a very high butterfat content. That nanny goat is kindly letting a lamb have a drink. But is it? A goat, that is. These are actually Demara sheep, a breed that's sometimes jokingly called a geep, since they look like a cross between a goat and a sheep. They are, in fact, a naturally occurring breed from Egypt and East Asia. The comparisons to other animals don't stop there. Damara sheep have hair similar to a dog's, and their chubby tails work like a camel's hump, the fat store helping them survive hard times. Growing up in such a lush setting, that's one thing this lamb doesn't have to worry about. Looks like Mum's had enough. And it's now her turn for a morning graze. Farms and flies do, unfortunately, go together. But the residents are equipped with their own natural swaps. That foal's getting a faceful. But that's the price you pay to stay nice and close to Mum. Maybe there are a couple of reasons for all this swishing. To whisk away pests and to show how good breakfast was. These are very happy young customers. The sun is out. And so are these chicks. Almost. Those tiny legs need a rest before they can make their way down the rest of the gangplank. A speckled Sussex hen is taking her older chicks for a morning stroll. Free ranging like this gives them a chance to scratch up some special treats for themselves, like insects and worms. Elsewhere, some Pekin Bantam chicks are having a quick game of hide-and-seek behind their mum's fluffy legs. Playtime is over, though, as these chickens are on a mission this morning, not to cross the road, just the farmyard, in search of snacks. Those little legs can really motor. Strutting along single file, they look like they're in a fashion parade showing off their fancy plumage. But playing follow the leader is all part of them learning their place in the flock's pecking order. Roosters usually reign supreme, but since he's not around, the hens are sharing the workload. Pecking order not only influences each chicken's rank, but also daily activities, 
like who gets to eat first. Chickens eat small amounts often. So time to work off those carbs and find out if the grass really is greener on the other side of the fence. A flock of another kind already know the answer. It's all delicious. This lamb's gone one better, though. Dining alone in this open-air cafe. Why settle for grass? When there are other, tastier options available. While the rest of the flock continues to graze, this baby sheep is getting into the newest craze. Log climbing. These young, woolly trendsetters are also big fans of bucket sitting. Time to check out the family album. First up is the smallest member of the horse family. Originally from the deserts of Africa, the humble donkey. When a female donkey, called a Jenny, reaches two years of age, she is mature enough to start a family of her own, giving birth to a single foal after a 12-month gestation. The new arrivals can weigh almost 14 kilos. Donkey foals are fully developed at birth and will stand a little wobbly at first and nurse within the first hour or so. Jennies don't produce much milk, so their foals tend to stay close by so they can drink as often as possible. Foals will give plants and grass a taste test early, but don't really start to graze until they're five months old. Donkeys have been domesticated for at least 5,000 years. These strong, hardy creatures being the original tractors and trucks for farmers. In many developing countries, they still are, often being considered a person's most prized possession. While they do have a bad reputation for being stubborn, it's usually down to the fact that these intelligent animals are more cautious than horses. Donkeys are very affectionate and love human companionship. They are also excellent guard animals for livestock. Thanks to their large ears, they have great hearing and are not afraid to fend off any attackers with their hooves and teeth. What farm could do without such loyal, brave creatures? Next are some more unusual farm residents. From the same family as pheasants and partridges, quails. Quail hens are quite talented little artists, laying petite speckled eggs in clutches of five or six. In a year, they can lay up to 300 eggs, depending on the breed. After two to three weeks, they hatch, the babies weighing under 10 grams. Their feathers are as mottled as the shells they just cracked out of. This natural camouflage, a leftover trait from their wild ancestry. At this early stage, they feed on finely ground starter crumble. The chicks don't take long to mature, just six weeks, with young hens able to start laying a week later. Quails are like mini chickens. They just take up less space and are much quieter, making them a quirky, low-maintenance addition to any farm. Most farms have at least one canine in their collection. With the term shepherd in their name, it's no surprise that these dogs have a background well-rooted in rural life. With puppies everywhere, what better excuse to spend some time with one of our most loyal companions, the German Shepherd. Protection is the name of the game for German Shepherds. While the breed started out looking after sheep, these days, they're better known for watching over humans. With a litter of 10 pups, this German Shepherd mum has her paws full. For 
the first three weeks, these wriggly bundles feed solely on her milk. These little working dogs will eventually stand 60 centimetres tall and weigh up to 40 kilograms. This older pair are burning off a bit of energy, something German shepherds have a lot of, by exploring the farm and play fighting. Apart from exercising their bodies, there's nothing this breed likes better than to work out their brains. German shepherds thrive when they have something new to learn or are given a job to do. As for these two, they're busy figuring out which one is the top dog. This could take all morning. Some farms have an interesting assortment of characters roaming around the grounds. Like this junior ship of the desert. have been domesticated for more than 3,000 years and come from a long line of hard workers. Before motorised vehicles, camels were a major means of transportation. This youngster is a dromedary camel, the kind with just one hump. She's not shy at all, batting those long eyelashes. While already tall, she still has a lot of growing to do. Camels aren't fully mature until they're seven years old. Eventually, this not so little lady will be almost two meters tall at the shoulder and weigh up to 540 kilograms. Back to those eyelashes. She's actually got two rows of these beauties and they're not just about good looks. These desert dwellers also use them as sunglasses and sunscreens. If some grit should get through, camels have an extra inner eyelid that acts like a mini windscreen wiper to clear the view. Their noses also come equipped with special muscles that keep sand out while still allowing air in. Very handy for desert life, but since this farm is sand dune free, that's something this calf doesn't have to contend with. There are much more important matters, like what's for morning tea. Camels aren't picky eaters. In the wild, they'll forage on whatever vegetation they can find, no matter how prickly. Here, the chef's serving up a gourmet mix of loosened hay, barley and pellets. It's lip-smacking good. The whole gang agree. The service here is top-notch. After such an enjoyable meal, this trio are sure to leave lots of generous tips around the farmyard. <coughs> Camels may not be traditional farm animals, but these birds are. Geese are a classic favourite. Let's take some time to follow the lives of these popular waterfowl. From the nest, up. A goose can begin to raise a family of her own at the early age of two, lining the nest with some of her own down. They will lay one egg a day until they have a full clutch to sit on. After incubating for about a month, the eggs begin to hatch. This one's been brought inside, giving us an opportunity to catch this special moment. The tiny baby has already picked or cracked the shell using its egg tooth. The goslings made a bit more progress. This can take hours. Amazing to see it still curled up inside what's left of its shell. It's a tight squeeze in there. Here are some of its nest mates. Their down has dried and they're ready to go. These babies are already able to feed themselves. The mother goose is, however, on hand 
just in case they'd like some hints on how to pull up the best shoot tips. The gander, their proud dad, is close by, keeping watch. Once goslings come into the world, it's hard to stop them from eating. This mini gaggle are enjoying an early lunch of soggy wheat, just the way they like it. Elsewhere, an older gosling has cheekily wandered into a vegetable patch. What luck! Busted! But the farmer seems willing to share a few leaves with their feathered friend. Goslings are fast growers and tend to stick together as a family, both on land or out dabbling in the water. These goosey toddlers have come ashore for a prenathon. It's a frantic competition. A mature goose can weigh nine kilos. The gander's adding a few more. These waterfowl made for life, a partnership that can last for up to 25 years. A good long life for these beloved farmyard residents. With the afternoon fast approaching, let's check in on the German Shepherd pups. Looks like lunch has already been served. And they're finally giving their mum a break. The morning rush has got the best of them. Out in the yard, it's a different story. Being that little bit older, you can see their wolf-like features coming through. Their muzzles have grown longer. Their ears are now standing upright and alert, ready for anything. Exactly what you'd expect from this intelligent, athletic breed. This mother's taken her smaller family out for a picnic. It's not long before all that good food and fresh air make these babies feel drowsy. Curling up in the sun is the thing to do at midday. There's a real art to it. Each farm baby having their own special style. Some like to do the face plant. Others prefer to be flat out on their grassy mattress. This lamb looks like it's multitasking, sleepily working on its tan. Here's a comfy trio. That pup's being a total bed hog. Sometimes you have the best dreams when you sleep snout to snout. Farm babies really know how to have the sweetest siestas. The farm babies are on the stampede this afternoon, making their way back into Fun Central, the barnyard. This place is jumping. Piglets always know how to sniff out a good time. Ear biting and snout jousting are on the schedule. The rooster's acting as referee. Despite the size difference, the runt's got the moves. This pygmy goat kid's learning some moves of its own, like how to be stealthy. Next on the list for this baby pygmy goat is how to annoy mom. And pronk 
like a gazelle. It's a little wobbly on those legs, but this kid is doing great. The final test to face. One steep step. Success. The reward for all its efforts is under here. Somewhere. Whoops. Found it. And richly deserved. After their midday catnap, these youngsters have energy to burn. Play fight. Why just wrestle when you can throw in some acrobatics as well? Further down the road, there's another friendly dust-up taking place. This pair are proof that opposites attract. It's a battle royale between classic rivals, each adopting their own signature moves. Hard to tell which one's ahead, but since tails are wagging, let's call it a draw. Meanwhile, out in the paddock, there's a wild and woolly game of tag going on. But no one seems to know who's it. And no one seems to care. Time for a post-siesta tour of an atypical farm, a deer farm. Deer are very social animals. The ladies, or does, usually breaking themselves into smaller groups, led by a matriarch, an older, dominant female. The rest of the boss lady's clique is made up of her relatives or offspring, plus their fawns. This mother spoiling her baby with a loving tongue bath. Once it's spotless, the next job for this baby is to have a suckle on her concentrated, high-fat milk. Speaking of spots, fawns are born with an average of 300. These pretty markings being part of their natural camouflage, matching the dappled light of a forest floor. Fawns are also born odorless, another protective measure that helps to keep these youngsters safe from any lurking danger. This fawn's up for a little adventure. Taking its mum along a popular scenic route. Looks like this is the end of the line. A chance to practise its balance. A quick suckle. Time to rejoin the herd. Back at the ranch, things are pretty hectic, with a whole lot of resting being done. This pair are doing a fantastic job. When it comes to country living, there is a whole panorama of choices available for animals on the lookout for their own piece of rural paradise. Large yards and solid fences usually come as standard features. For some, a good view is essential. It's always best to inspect the bedrooms to ensure the decor is in good taste and that there is plenty of headroom. Natural light is always a bonus. Close proximity to the pantry is a must for some homeowners. As far as dining goes, this family is more outdoorsy. Farmers usually allow about 37 square metres per horse to ensure they have plenty of space. After having a good romp around, 
This foal is sold. It's so excited about settling into this grassy neighborhood. A good solid house is what these birds are in the market for. The rustic look is also very appealing. The whole flocks come to inspect the place, inside and out. Rabbits really know how to sniff out good real estate. With such a large family to accommodate, looks like they found the hutch for them. Apart from needing space to hop around and rest, rabbits also require somewhere to hide and go to the toilet. This hutch is nice and secure. A good thing with such friendly neighbors. It's got a large, spacious dining room, plus a big nursery. Perfect to keep their fresh litter of kits nice and cozy. Didn't take these babies long to feel right at home. The family album is opening, giving us a chance to take a closer look at some birds first domesticated by the ancient Romans, helmeted guinea fowl. Females typically lay a clutch of 12 to 15 small eggs. Almost a month later, they hatch, the chicks being known as keats. Keats are very sensitive when first born and are usually kept in a brooder box for the first six weeks. When they become fully feathered, they can be moved to a nursery and start to meet the rest of the flock. Guinea fowl play a couple of important roles on a farm. When these birds get together in a flock, they are incredibly noisy and are easily startled. Their loud calls work as an alarm, warning other farm animals of danger. Guinea fowl are also on pest control duty. They mainly feed on seeds and berries, but also snack on a number of insects, including termites, ticks, and wasps. By gobbling these up, they're helping to reduce the spread of illness on the property. These quirky, fence-sitting fowls have got it all. Circus skills, exotic good looks, and the instincts of a guard dog. What barnyard could do without them? From feathers to fleece. Next in the album are a special breed of Spanish sheep prized for their fine, soft wool. Merinos. After a five-month wait, merino mothers, or ewes, give birth. Newborn lambs weighing up to five kilograms. And twins are not uncommon. For the first few weeks of their lives, lambs can't digest anything but their mother's milk. After that stage, they're able to give greens a try. Baby sheep can be weaned any time after the two-month mark. These mini lawnmowers are born with eight baby teeth on their lower jaw. Their first two permanent incisors coming through by the time they're 18 months old. By this stage in their life, they're called hoggets. A mature merino can tip the scales at about 80 kilos. And at this size, when they have their annual haircut, their fleece can weigh an impressive 12 kilograms. Usually, this breed can be expected to graze the paddocks for close to 10 years, but some go above and beyond. The oldest living sheep title was once held by a 23-year-old Merino ewe. That's definitely something to bleat about. With their wide open fields, farms are very welcoming places. There's always room for more. At certain times of the year, paddocks and barns can be like maternity wards, with new generations arriving all the time. This calf is so fresh to the world, its coat is still wet. In another cow shed, there's a similar story unfolding.
that licking is not just about tidying up. It's also how mother calf pairs start to bond. At special times like these, farmers are careful not to interrupt. Any human contact with the calf at this stage could result in the cow not recognizing the baby as being hers. Calves are born with their eyes open and are able to stand and suckle within a couple of hours of birth. Some of these babies take their time about it, while others are keen to tackle the wobblies. Ta-da! This woolly newborn deserves a standing ovation as well. Creatures of all shapes and sizes make their homes on farms. And hands down, one of the largest roaming the paddocks are draft horses. While the average horse stands at 15 hands, these gentle giants can reach much loftier heights, getting up to 19 hands and greater. That's over two meters. Their falls are just as big. Newborns can weigh in at 100 kilograms. That's a whole lot of baby. Just looking at them, it's easy to see that they're all about horsepower. They are the muscles of the farm world, able to pull incredibly heavy loads. And they do so in style. Many draft breeds accessorizing their beefy good looks with long, silky leg hairs called feathers. This one is not relying on its good looks to make sure it gets a good feed. That is one big hint. Massive in size and appeal. The draft horse. In the middle of the afternoon, there's often a sound that can be heard around farms. Hear it? That's hunger calling. Can't decide what to sink your teeth into? Feel like something fresh and crispy? If only those red things were great for dogs to eat, right? But why munch on apples? When you can crunch through a pile of these, this pup will have lovely pine-fresh breath after this spiky treat. Meanwhile, a mother hen is taking her brood for a foodies tour. Going where no chick has been before. Searching out new, earthy flavours. Free-range grubs never tasted so good. The craze is catching on. These chicks really dig having an afternoon tea al fresco. It's standing room only at this watering hole. The service is just as personal here. The more, the merrier. This little swine is kindly taking one for the team. Taste testing what's on offer before the rest of the gang turn up. Some farm babies need a bit of a helping hand when it comes to snack time. Hand-reared calves are usually fed a warm bottle every three or four hours, drinking up to a litre every feed. It can take these big babies two or three goes before they master suckling from one of these pretend udders. Being smaller, lambs need less milk per feed. Farmers mixing up special milk replacement formulas for them. A baby's bottle is perfect for the job. The smaller teat being just the right size for their hungry mouths. Hand-raised fawns can also nurse from bottles. Warm goat's milk is a great alternative for them. should be held up high so they can feed like they would from a doe.
back out in the sunny fields, tails are wagging. Everything's going down a treat. These lambs have gone for a more savoury option. Salty lollipops are very trendy in these parts. After a good snack, there's nothing like a refreshing drink to wash it all down. This is the life. While many farms stretch as far as the eye can see, some are much more compact. The residents of hives might be small, but they take free-ranging to a whole other level. Honeybees can forage as far as 10 kilometres away from their home base. People have been keeping bees for more than 7,000 years. Not only for their honey, but also for their pollination skills. Watching them up close, you can see how these fuzzy-coated insects do such a great job spreading pollen, not just from flower to flower, but also farm to farm. Every time they stop to drink in nectar, they lose some of their precious cargo. Not to worry, because at the same time, they gain a fresh layer of this reproductive dust. Repeat the cycle 18,000 times. That's how many flowers just one worker bee can visit in a day. And it's no wonder bees are called busy. Time to get the inside story on the lives of these fascinating creatures. An apiary, or collection of hives, is like a cluster of bee farms. Each hive having its own royal figurehead, the queen ruling supreme. She's easy to tell from the smaller worker bees, thanks to her long, majestic abdomen. The queen alone lays all of the eggs in the hive, up to 2,000 in a single day. After three days, the eggs hatch. Worker bees feeding the tiny larvae with honey and a milky substance they secrete, called royal jelly. Six days later, the egg cells are capped and the larvae pupate. After three weeks or so, they emerge. Fertilized eggs become female worker bees, and unfertilized eggs develop into male drones, which breed with the queen. A bee's lifespan is determined by their caste. Drones have short but sweet lives, not surviving long after mating. Worker bees have about six weeks to buzz around, and queens get to rule their bustling hives for two to four years. Then a newly hatched queen will take over. For such small creatures, they have very intricate lives. The afternoon's rolling along. And checking in on the deer, it might be surprising how active they are. While most farms are starting to wind down, it's the opposite with these creatures. Deer are crepuscular, which means they're most active at dawn and dusk. Before the sun goes down, there's plenty of grazing that needs to be done. A few grains for dessert, then it's time to find a good spot to hit the hay. Speaking of hay, this pup's hit the mother load. But there are a few more jobs to do before bedtime. The sheep need to be rounded up and brought home safely. A border collie speciality.
Looks like the house dog wants to have a go at mustering. Although Pomeranians aren't usually known for their herding skills. Out in the fields, some lambs are sneaking in one last graze before snuggling up to their woolly mums. Back at the farmhouse, the kittens are having a bath. Then, one more play. Tails were made to swat at. Even at the end of the day, babies do have a lot of energy. Finally, the batteries are nearly empty. This kitten's almost ready to settle down. Almost. These piglets are so ready to retire, looking very comfy in their spotty and stripy pyjamas. With the sun on their backs, these naughty stragglers are having their last frolic before following the rest of the flock back to the homestead for a well-earned rest. So they and the rest of the farmyard babies can do it all again tomorrow.